O believers, slaves of Allah, the first thing that I command with is the taqwa of Allah, the magnificent, the sublime. And what is taqwa? It is to do an act of obedience upon a light from Allah, hoping for a reward from Him. And similarly, it is to stay away from acts of disobedience, sins, upon a light from Allah, fearing His punishment. My noble believing brothers and sisters, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam informed us in the hadith that is collected by Imam Bukhari and Imam Muslim and the authority of Abu Musa al-Ash'ari radiallahu ta'ala an al-mu'min lil-mu'min kalbunyan that the believer to another believer is like a constructed building yashudduhu ba'duhu ba'da they support one another. A constructed building, the top of it cannot stand by itself. It needs support from under and the right and the left. So the Prophet wasallam he said here, a believer to a believer is like a constructed building. This is the brotherhood in Islam. Yashudduhu ba'duhu ba'da. They support one another. Then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Shabaka Baina Asabi'ihi It wasn't enough that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned these words to explain what is brotherhood in Islam but he Alaihi Salatu Wasallam also signified with his hands to show us what is brotherhood and that is that he interlaced his fingers to show how the brothers in Islam are how they are tightly knitted, they help one another, they support one another upon that which is good and upon the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam informed us in another hadith that is found in the collection of Imam Muslim under authority of Abi Huraira radiallahu ta'ala an Mathalu al-mu'minina fi tawadihim wa tarahumihim wa ta'atufihim Mathalu al-jasad Iza shtaka minhu udwun tada'a lahu sa'iru al-jasad bis-sahari wal-humma The example of the believers as it relates to their love and affection and concern for one another. It's like one body, the body of a human being. Allahu Akbar. The body of a human being. Why is this example so significant? Because the Prophet wasallam, he led us to understood what is brotherhood. He said, and if it is that one part of this body becomes affected, one part of this body, whether it be that an insect harms that body, a small ant comes and bites a person's toe, or another insect sucks the blood of that individual, his hand or his face, what happens to the rest of the body? The rest of the body feels the effect of that pain and it gets fever. This is the example of the love and affection and concern that the believers have for one another. This is why Allah wa ta'ala, my noble believing brothers and sisters, He said, Innama al mu'minuna ikhwa, fa aslihu bayna akhawaykum. And indeed, the believers, they are what? They are brothers. What is understood by the statement of Allah, the mighty and sublime? 
Then we go to the Mufassir, Sheikh Abdul Rahman al Si'adi, Rahimahullah Ta'ala. Listen to these affecting words that Allah said, Innam al Mu'minuna ikhwa, that the believers they are brothers one to another. What is the meaning of this? Sheikh Abdul Rahman al Sa'di he said, Hadha aqt, Allahu Akbar. This is an agreement. Who is making this agreement? Aqadahu Allahu tabaraka wa ta'ala bayna al mu'mineen. That this is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala making an agreement between the believers. Allahu Akbar. What is this agreement that he is making? Allah Tabaraka wa ta'ala is informing us here as Sheikh Abdul Rahman as Si'adi, he said, إِذَا وَجَدَ مِنْ أَيِّ شَقْسٍ كَانَ فِي مَشْرِكِ الْأَرْضِ وَمَغْرِبِهَا الْإِيمَانِ بِاللَّهِ وَمَلَائِكَتِهِ وَكُتُبِهِ وَرُسُلِهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ فَإِنَّهُ أَخْ لِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ إِخْوَةٌ يُوجَبُ أن يحب له المؤمنون ما يحبون لأنفسهم. This is an agreement between Allah and the believers, and that is that if it is there is any human being that is found upon this earth, wherever he may be, it be the east and the west, and this person believes in Allah. His books, his messengers, his angels, and the last day, then the agreement is that this individual is a brother to every Muslim, wherever that Muslim may be. So long as it is, he has faith in Allah, Allah's angels, his books, his messengers, and the last day, then the agreement here with Allah. And the believers is that this person is considered to be a brother to all of the believers, Allahu Akbar. A brotherhood which makes it incumbent upon the believers that they love for this person that which they love for themselves. And they hate for this person that which they hate for themselves. This is brotherhood in Islam. Not what we are taught here in Trinidad. Hating one another, animosity for one another, anger for one another, jealousy for one another, spiting one another. Allahul Musta'an. Allahul Musta'an. And this is why the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam informed us in the hadith. That is found in the collection of Imam al Bukhari and Imam Muslim under authority of Nu'man ibn Bashir. Radiallahu ta'ala an. La tahasadu. Wala tanajashu. Wala tadabaru. Wala tabagadu. Wala yabi'u ba'dukum ala bay'i ba'd. Wakunu ibadallahi ikhwan. وَكُونُوا إِبَادَ اللَّهِ إِخْوَانًا المسلم أخ المسلم لا يظلمه ولا يغذله ولا يحكره The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم He informed us in this great hadith Listen carefully in this beautiful hadith that is found in the authentic collection of Imam al-Bukhari and Imam Muslim. A command, do not jealous one another. Listen carefully. Do not jealous one another. Do not undercut one another. Do not hate one another. Do not spite one another. Do not trade against your brother meaning that you undercut his prices but rather be brothers one to another be what brothers one to another a believer is a brother to a believer 
He does not oppress him. He does not forsake him. You see what brotherhood is? He does not oppress him. He does not forsake him. How many of us oppress one another? Wrong one another? Forsake one another? And he does not belittle him. Then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he took his hand and he hit his chest three times and he said, At-taqwaha huna. The piety is in the heart until the end of the hadith. This is what is brotherhood in the religion of Al-Islam. True brotherhood. And it is something that is extremely rare to find amongst, sadly, the believers. That we don't understand what brotherhood is and what is inclusive in this beautiful statement and these beautiful evidences in the religion of Al-Islam that directs us to true ukhuwa, true unified brotherhood. Barakallahu li wa lakum fil Qur'an al-Azim wa nafa'ni wa iyaakum min al-bayan wa dhikr al-hakim akulu hadha al-qawl wa astaghfir al-ahli wa lakum wa li sa'ir al-muslimin min kulli dhamb wa astaghfiruhu إنه هو الغفور الرحيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله على فضله وإحسانه وأشكره على توفيقه وامتنانه وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله وبعد. We go further to explain what is brotherhood in the religion of Islam. I direct all of you to the beautiful hadith that is found in the Sahih of Imam Al Bukhari and Imam Muslim. And the authority of the companion Abu Hamza Anas ibn Malik radiallahu ta'ala an Khadim al Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam The companion that is narrating this hadith His name is Anas His kunya was Abu Hamza And he was the son of Malik Al-Ansari And he was an Ansari and he was an Ansari, meaning he was from the people of Medina that were known as the helpers. And he was also someone that tended to the needs of the Prophet He was blessed with this honor and favor and gift from Allah to serve the Prophet How did he become someone so close to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That is because when the Prophet Alaihi Salatu Wasallam came to Medina on the Hijrah, the migration from Mecca, when it is that he arrived in Medina, the father of Anas, whose name was Malik, left Medina. Why did he leave Medina? He left Medina because of his extreme hatred for the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He didn't give the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam a fair chance. So what did he do because of his hatred? He migrated from Medina and he went to Sham. He went to Syria. Ahlul Ilm, they mentioned that he ended up dying there as a Kafir. This was the father of Anas Radiallahu Ta'ala An. So when it is that his father died, he was still a young boy. And he was left with his mother, whose name was Umm Sulaim, radiallahu ta'ala anha. Look at the noble deed of a righteous mother. She was left with her son and no husband. What did she do? She went to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, with her son and she offered him Anas radiallahu ta'ala an. 
so that Anas may serve the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Look at the intelligence of a wise mother, a wise parent who was concerned about her son. If we look at this deed, we're going to say, how can I give my son to be someone that would serve an individual? Because these people, the companions, they were intellectual individuals. Intellect that we don't possess. So what did she do? She offered him as someone that would aid the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Look at the wisdom. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he accepted her offer. Allahu Akbar. Which meant what? It meant that Anas Radiallahu Ta'ala an was nurtured by the best human being on the face of the earth, Allahu Akbar. By the best father, by the best teacher, by the best of the messengers and prophets, by the best human being that was ever sent to humanity. So Anas radiallahu ta'ala an was given this great gift of being nurtured in the care of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allahu Akbar. So Anas is narrating the hadith. And this hadith, the ulama, they mention it is what is known as Jawami' al-Kalim. A hadith that is very brief in words. The words are very brief, but the meaning is extremely vast. Numerous benefits for every human being. Anas radiallahu ta'ala an, he said that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, لا يؤمن أحدكم حتى يحب لأخيه ما يحب لنفسي None of you, listen carefully, none of you is a true believer until you love for your brother that which you love for yourself. Allahu Akbar. None of you is a true believer until you love for your brother that which you love for yourself. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he began this short hadith, noble hadith, with the statement, La yu'minu ahadukum. None of you is a true believer. This does not mean that it is a negation of Iman. It doesn't mean that a person's Iman is totally negated. But what is meant here, listen carefully, is that the person's faith is not complete. It is deficient. It means that the person's Iman is deficient. How is it deficient? The Prophet ﷺ said, لا يؤمن أحدكم حتى يحب لأخيه None of you is a true believer. Meaning that any one of you who doesn't love for your brother, that which you love for yourself, that your Iman is deficient. Your Iman is nakis. Your Iman is not complete. Allahu Akbar. لا يؤمن أحدكم حتى يحب لأخيه مَا يُحِبُّ لِنَفْسِي Then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, لِأَخِيهِ None of you is a true believer until you love for your what? For your brother. Which brother is being referred to here? The ulama, they mention that this is not the brother fi nasab. It is not the brother as it relates to the brother that came out of the same womb as our mother. It does not refer to a brother in lineage, but rather it refers to brother in deen. Going back to the verse, إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ إِخْوَى And indeed the believers are what? They are brothers one to another. What is the understanding of this ayah? We mention it from the tafsir of Sheikh Abdul Rahman al Si'adi that anywhere there is a believer on the face of the earth, wherever he may be, so long as he believes in Allah, Allah's angels, his books, his messengers, the last day, then this individual is a brother to every Muslim. To every Muslim. And if it is that he is a brother to every Muslim, then for us who wants to complete our Iman, then we should love for him that which we love for ourselves. And we should hate for him that which we hate for ourselves. Allahu Akbar. We should love for him that which we love for ourselves. 
and we should hate for him that which we hate for ourselves. Whatever we eat, we should love that he eats it. Whatever iman that we feel, we should love that he feels the same iman. Whatever we hate from kufr and disbelief, we should hate that our brother feels those acts of kufr and disbelief. And who was the best to exemplify this? Who was the best of humanity to exemplify this? Indeed, he was the messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Allahu Akbar Indeed, he was who? He was the messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam And this is confirmed in the statement of Allah Tabaraka Wa Ta'ala لَقَدْ جَاءَكُمْ رَسُولًا مِنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ عَزِيزٌ عَلَيْهِ مَا عَنِتُمْ حَرِيصٌ عَلَيْكُمْ بِالْمُؤْمِنِينَ رَؤُوفُ الرَّحِيمِ And there has come a messenger to all of you from amongst yourselves. Meaning he was from the Arabs and they knew him very well. We said that what? The messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam exemplified this hadith in the best manner. Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala is informing us and indeed, there came a messenger to all of you from amongst yourselves. And it grieves him. It what? It grieves him. That any one of you should go through harm, hurts, danger. So the Prophet wasallam, he hates for the believers what he hates for himself. It grieves him. حَرِيصٌ عَلَيْكُمْ بِالْمُؤْمِنِينَ رَعُوفٌ رَحِيمٌ And he is anxious to see that you are rightly guided and saved. So he loves for his brothers what he loved for himself. He hated for them what he hated for himself. And he loves for them what he loved for himself. He hated kufr for them. And he wanted to see them directed. And he loved for them iman and islam. So he wanted to see them saved, coming to the religion of Tawheed and Monotheism. Bil mu'minina ra'ufur rahim. And to the believers, he was what? He was compassionate and merciful. Allahu Akbar. He was compassionate and merciful. In closing, my noble believing brothers and sisters, may Allah wa ta'ala purify our hearts. And direct us to true Iman and to understand the religion of Al Islam and to be people that enter into this religion wholeheartedly, not one foot in and the other foot out. Whenever I want to do something good, then I do it. The believer, this is not his way, he is always striving every day, every minute, every second to do a righteous deed. And the best of these deeds, oh brothers and sisters, don't let the shaitan deceive you. The best of these deeds is to learn the religion of Al-Islam. It's talab al-ilm, to study the religion of Al-Islam. We begin by purifying our hearts and ridding our hearts from the misconceptions that we grew up with in Islam. And how many misconceptions were we taught here in Trinidad up until this time of ours? The people are drowning in misconceptions. They can't even surface, they can't even find themselves. Because of these misleading callers and these misleading teachers, may Allah wa ta save us from them and their harms and direct us to what is good and help us to see the truth for truth and falsehood for falsehood and help us to hold on to the truth and help us to stay away from every act of disobedience and every act that would earn us his punishment and his anger. Wa akimus salah.